I lost my belt, YouTube. Can a man get a sponsorship right here? He only done this for 15 years. Squat, dude. All we do is squat. Someone called me out on chicken legs like three months ago. It pissed me so off. I think I'm gonna go high bar belted heavy single. So we did, uh, what did we do? High bar Monday, front squat. front squat Tuesday. Yesterday I did a low bar on the transformer bar, beltless. And uh, we're very tired. I'm very tired. But we're, we're going to hit a new low at 201 yesterday, 202 today. You know how things fluctuate. And then, uh, yeah, so we'll go a little heavier, see if we just handle a single, something over four, I don't, nothing crazy, something over four, and then another pull day. So back, back buys, back buy, back buy. What are we talking about today? So today's video, we're gonna talk about a little bit about sumo, why it's cheating, um, why, conventional, when, why, how, why you should pull one or the other, and actual truth about the muscularity. So whether hypertrophy is your goal, um, Strengths your goal, general athleticism, or powerlifting specific. Uh, we'll dive in. We got, Eddie likes it, dude, look. Is it worth it? Let me work it. Dude, this is a banging playlist. I got the playlist on today, dude. I wish we could share a good, I know, I wish we could share good music with y'all. It's Missy Elliott. I didn't make the playlist, I should, but it's like, a, on Spotify, just like Missy Elliott dance hype or something, and it's, it's good. It's your freaking pick a ticket there, pick a top. This is good. The whole list is good though, just wait. Arguments. Uh, you mother freaking TikTokers are making about deadlifts not being good for hypertrophy, but then all of a sudden everyone thinks RDLs are like the best glute and hamstring and back exercise on the planet. Is that there's no eccentric in the movement. And it is true that eccentrics are having double the stimulus of a concentric and eccentric lift will allow you to build more muscle. But guess friggin' what? You're allowed to control the eccentric on a deadlift. There's nothing in the rule books of life and the unspoken rules of the barbell. And you wanna see some freaking hamstrings, dude? How do you flex them? I don't know how to flex them, but I got some fucking hammies, all right? Teach me how to flex the hammies. So, long story short, you can deadlift and use more weight. It's gonna be more stimulus and fatigue on the body. You can control the eccentric, so you can get the benefits of the eccentric portion of the lift. Now, if you're a power lifter, we've done a video on it if you wanna go back, but like helping my deadlift and the Ed Cone style deadlift, I think it's a great strength move too, just like a tempo or a, or a, or a pause squat or anything else. Controlling the eccentric and the deadlift helps. Not to say that you must deadlift to build uh, muscle. There's a lot of other ways and hamstrings and back exercises you can do, but just to throw them out the window makes no sense. On top of that, the risk versus reward, people just regurgitate that like they're a fucking parrot. Statistically, a bench, a squat, the risk towards reward or the risk being injury is so incredibly low on all those movements. And they're the exact same on all three movements, statistically. So if you think uh, deadlifts are gonna, you're gonna get injured, I better not see you heavy dumbbell pressing, I better not see you benching or squatting. And I, I doubt there's statistics on it, but I would highly argue, anecdotally, and just from 15 years of this game, that squatting, deadlifting, the statistics of the risk is the exact same as a heavy ass leg press or hack squat. I guarantee it. So don't come at me with the risk versus reward. If you don't like the exercise, just friggin' say it with your chest. Yeah. probably like a you know I'm trying not to get fired up trying to chill out a little bit so because you got squat every day you can't get hyped up every day man even if you're competing you're squatting heavy three times a week you gotta save it so RP eight and a half on a no hype More, 
More deadlift fun facts. Seabass said you guys are being sissies if you don't want to deadlift. I didn't say that. I may or may not agree. Uh, but one thing is a big like uh, misconception is everyone says like, oh, I can't deadlift heavy and I can't do it that often because it tires out my CNS. Um, but evidence also shows that squats, bench, deadlift, they'll all tire out your CNS equally. The difference is that most people don't have the skill or the musculature in the squat or the bench to lift the same amount of weight. So you're moving more overall weight in the deadlift. That's why you feel like your CNS is more tired. But the truth is, again, because the squat is concentric and eccentric movement, you're starting at the top, deadlift you're starting at the bottom, it's actually less overall systemic fatigue. So if you want to get better at deadlifts, just like any other lift, doing it two, twice a week isn't a bad idea. Now you have to control for intensity, how heavy you go and how hard you push, and volume, how many sets and reps you're doing. Um, but generally speaking, if you want to get stronger, you want to get bigger, and you want to get better at something, you have to do it more often. And the CNS's excuse is all placebo, and like no placebos, placebos, all those things work if you believe it. So stop believing that because factually it's just not true. Tell yourself you can deadlift and get stronger more often, and you literally can. I don't know why it's like a thing. People still talking about like sumo being the best glute exercise, um, and I do think a hip hinge in general is really, really great. Depending on your leverages, your sumo and your conventional, the basic rules are going to be very similar, um, but they're going to look very different. If you're truly built for a sumo, it's actually probably the least advantageous to target the glutes in a workout. Um, you get some glute mead, which is this little guy on the top left, but that's not really what's gonna give you like a dumpy. Um, we want the glute max, which is like all hip hinge stuff. So as much as this angle right here can change under stress, under load, you're gonna get more dumpy work. Um, and so that's probably conventional. So conventional works the dumpy a little bit more, slightly more hamstring, cause same idea, this angle is gonna change a little bit more. Um, and again, some of it does depend on uh, your leverages, but most of the time, dumpy, hammies, conventional, and it's actually more of a quad exercise with uh, the sumo. Um, because again, this angle is gonna be the same, but where the tension is, we're gonna be extending our knee when we sumo deadlift. Uh, and then a lot of our back, our lats, they're all stabilizing erectors, if you're doing things correctly, are stabilizing. They're not like main movers or secondary muscles, uh, but you can still build them. You know, I, I, Some of it is genetics, but a lot of my erectors, my back, and my traps are all done uh, and built via deadlifts. I haven't done a lot of shrugs my entire life. One that thing that's like semi-anecdotal or like semi-hypothesized, uh, uh, even Mike Istriatel, I think, talked about it. Um, biceps, and I believe he said there's one study done in birds. I haven't read the research on this, my exact self, so don't quote me, um, but about hypertroph hypertrophic effects of a muscle being in a very stretched position. And I think they did it on birds, and the anecdotal evidence is a lot of gymnasts. They don't do a lot of like weight training, but their biceps are in extreme stretches under load isometrically for a very long time, and a lot of these um, Athletes have huge biceps, and so that's shown in birds. And that's something that I've said and I've read before, but for traps. You don't have to be shrugging and make your traps a main mover. They're not a type of muscle that's made to move or explode. They're made to stabilize. And so in a deadlift, under heavy, heavy loads over time, they're stabilizing in the strength length and position, um, and that builds traps best. So you want bigger traps, probably do some heavy-ass farmer's carries, heavy deadlifts, and stop shrugging. So how, when, why to choose what stance. Um, if you're a competitive power lifter, I suggest learning how to hip hinge properly with conventional. Just learn that movement pattern for six months to a year, and then you can experiment with sumo. Um, there are different body types that go into deadlifting, sumo versus conventional. Um, but typically, if you have a shorter torso, meaning hips to shoulder and longer arms, you're going to be set up to be a good deadlifter. You'll get in a better, more optimal position than people like me with very short arms and long uh, torsos. Um, the main difference then is if you have really long femurs, short torso, femurs meaning your thigh bone, um, and longish arms or even average arms, and you have the mobility to kick your knees out pretty good, you'll be set up for sumo. If you're built kind of average or somewhere in between, chances are they'll be similar for you. So the whole argument of sumo being easier or cheating or whatever is just a lie. Uh, that started, I guess, because strongman isn't conventional. I don't really know why it even started. Um, 
Yes, the range of motion is shortened for some people, right? Because you're moving the bar less distance. But if that was the case, then wide grip bench is cheating. And then why isn't everyone squatting with a super wide stance? The fact of the matter is range of motion, the distance you have to carry the bar is one factor. Um, you know, finding rigidity, finding leverages within different stances, grips or widths plays just as much of a factor than the range of motion. Um, and I know it's somewhat of a meme, but if memes carry on forever, they become truths and people just don't know. And so that's just simply not the case. See bum come fight me, just kidding. I don't want to fight nobody, but you're literally wrong. Um, if you look at the world records over time in powerlifting, uh, they're probably broken down pretty close to 55, 50%, both conventional and sumo. Um, sure, some of the biggest weights now, Jamal Browner's absolutely crushing his sumo, but that's just because he pulls sumo. Dude pulled like 980, he's also pulled like 900 conventional. The man's an absolute savage, regardless of stance. And similarly, look at his squat. His squat stance, very moderate. If it was just range of motion, trust me, more powerlifters would have their legs way out to squat more weight but it's one tiny factor in the scheme of things. Everyone would bench out here, they don't. Some do, some get away with it, some don't. Eric Spoto held the world strongest bench for the very long, long time uh, with 722, and he benched very moderate for what his size is and his girth. New videos every Tuesday, Thursday, man. Be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. New clothes are up 3SB.co. Third Street Barbell, if you're a Norco man, I'm Solomon Mike, I'm out of here.